Female orgasm is a complex psychological and biological experience. Reaching and experiencing orgasm is not the same for every woman. The orgasm can result from many types of stimulation, including stimulation of the clitoris, vaginal, and stimulation in erogenous zones, commonly the nipple area. Stimulation of the clitoris is the most common way for women to achieve orgasm. The clitoris is a small, highly sensitive organ located at the anterior junction of the labia minora, inner lips, above the vagina, and external urethral opening. It has four main parts, the glands, the body or shaft, the crura or legs, and the bulbs of the vestibule. The glands at the top of the vulva is the only visible part. It is about the size of a pea, ranging from a few millimeters to over a centimeter. A hood of skin covers it called the prepuce, or clitoral hood, which is analogous to the foreskin of the penis. It helps protect the clitoris glands from intense or constant friction. The clitoris extends internally, forming a structure that is significantly larger and more complex. This internal portion includes the clitoral body, which is approximately two to three centimeters long, and two cura legs that extend backward and attach to the pubic bones. These hidden structures create a wishbone-shaped organ that wraps around the vaginal canal. The full clitoris measures about nine to 12 centimeters in length. Rich in nerve endings, the glands alone has around 8,000 nerve endings connected to 15,000 more throughout the pelvic region making it one of the most sensitive organs in the female body with the sole purpose of sexual pleasure. Some women can achieve different kinds of orgasms from stimulation of select regions inside the vagina, such as the so-called G-spot and cervix, or a blend of the two. Erogenous zones are sensitive areas that can provide pleasure and sexual arousal when they receive stimulation. And the nipples are a common erogenous zone for many people. Each nipple has hundreds of nerve endings, making them super sensitive tissue. When the nipples are stimulated, they send sparks in the genital sensory cortex. This is the same area of the brain that's aroused by vaginal or clitoral stimulation. During arousal, blood flows to the genitals causing them to become more sensitive. As arousal increases, a person's heart and breathing rate may increase. Many women experience rhythmic muscle spasms in the vagina, uterus, and anus during or even after an orgasm. Contractions typically last between 0.8 and 17 seconds, but it can be different depending on the person and experience. Lubrication begins when the hormones signal to the brain that you are being aroused sexually. and the vulvovaginal glands start secreting fluids to help the process of penetration. There is swelling in the inner and outer vaginal lips. Although orgasm in women is not accompanied by seminal emission, some women squirt a mixture of urine and skein's gland secretions from the urethra at orgasm. 
which contain urea, creatinine, uric acid, and prostate-specific antigen. Hormonal birth control during or after pregnancy and menopause may cause some women to find it difficult to feel wet and experience painful intercourse. Without asking her, there is no way to tell if a woman has had an orgasm. An orgasm is both a physical and psychological response. Some women may need to feel love to orgasm. Excessive stress and strains of life. Relationship problems. Poor physical and mental health. A history of abortion and sexual abuse. Also, sometimes being religious and having sexual shame and stigma could make it more difficult to orgasm. Many females can have another orgasm after the resolution, whereas males usually require a period of rest before having another orgasm. Women do not need to orgasm to get pregnant. However, orgasms may boost fertility. 70 to 90 percent of women report that they need clitoral stimulation, either directly or indirectly, to reach orgasm. While it's a highly complex structure with far more nerve endings than the penis, it was dismissed as medically unimportant for centuries. This dismissal may stem from the fact that the clitoris does not play a direct role in reproduction. For centuries, it was considered useless, a leftover part with no real function. As a result, female pleasure has often been misunderstood or stigmatized, leading to harmful practices like female genital mutilation, FGM, which has affected more than 230 million girls and women alive today across 30 countries in Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. Female genital mutilation, FGM, comprises all procedures that involve partial or total removal of the external female genitalia. The practice has no health benefits for girls and women. It can result in severe pain and bleeding, problems urinating, and later cysts, menstrual difficulties, infections, death, as well as complications in childbirth and an increased risk of newborn deaths. The procedure is often done without anesthesia and always without consent. The reasons why FGM is performed vary from one region to another, including being wrongly believed to reduce a woman's desire, ensuring virginity before marriage, and fidelity afterward. This is a sharp contrast to the biological truth of sexual development. In the early weeks of development, every embryo begins with the same set of genital structures, regardless of sex. After weeks 6 to 12, hormones guide these structures to take different paths. If the embryo has XY chromosomes and is exposed to testosterone, the genital tubercle becomes a penis. Without that testosterone influence and in the presence of maternal estrogens, it becomes a clitoris. That means the clitoris and penis are homologous. They come from the same embryonic tissue and share many structural similarities. At birth, the clitoris is typically quite small. During childhood, it remains relatively consistent in size. However, with the onset of puberty and the surge of hormones like estrogen, the clitoris undergoes some growth, both in the size of the glands and the internal structures. Sexual stimuli, including physical direct touch, friction, or even indirectly through the movement of surrounding tissues, activate the parasympathetic nervous system. This activation increases blood flow to the clitoris, particularly within its internal structures. As a result, the clitoris swells and erect. 
the glands become more sensitive and the entire clitoral structure becomes firmer, similar to how the penis becomes erect. The crura and bulbs press against surrounding tissues, intensifying sensation. The clitoris itself doesn't produce lubrication. However, clitoral stimulation enhances overall arousal, causing the vaginal walls and Bartholin's glands to release natural lubrication. This helps to reduce friction, avoiding injuries, and make sexual activity more comfortable and pleasurable. Some women enjoy direct clitoral contact. Others may find it too intense during high arousal. It may even retract slightly under its hood, like a protective reflex against overstimulation. Clitoral stimulation can trigger powerful orgasms and activate multiple areas of the brain. Functional MRI studies show that clitoral stimulation lights up a wide network of brain regions, including those involved in emotion, movement, memory, and bonding. Some researchers suggest that clitoral orgasms may be neurologically more intense than many male orgasms, as the stimulation engages more regions of the brain than most other types of sensory input. This full brain involvement shows that orgasm isn't just a physical release. It's a whole body, emotional and mental experience. Just like the nose and ears keep growing, the clitoris continues to grow as a woman ages in response to hormones, especially estrogen and testosterone. The tissues can become larger and more prominent. Studies show that the clitoris can grow up to 2.5 times its original size from puberty to postmenopause, Women who have given birth may have significantly larger clitoral measurements. Some women may experience a lack of clitoral sensation, which refers to a diminished or complete absence of feeling in the clitoris during stimulation. This can interfere with sexual arousal and may make it difficult or impossible to achieve orgasm. This condition, known as clitoral numbness, can feel like a reduced response to stimulation or total insensitivity to touch. It may result from nerve damage caused by childbirth, surgery, chronic pelvic pain conditions, spinal cord injuries, certain medical conditions, medications, or physical or emotional traumas. Due to the drop in estrogen levels after menopause, several changes can occur in the clitoris. It may become less sensitive. The clitoral tissues can shrink or lose firmness, a condition known as atrophy. The glands, the visible tip, may appear smaller or retract further under the hood. Surrounding tissues may also become dry and thin, which can cause discomfort during touch or sexual activity for some women. Despite these changes, many women can still experience pleasure with proper support, such as hormone therapy, lubricants, regular stimulation, or pelvic therapy. The clitoris stays for life and doesn't shut down with age. It may just need different care post-menopause. The hymen is a small, thin membranous tissue at the vaginal opening. During development in the womb, the hymen develops and completely covers the vagina. As the vagina is formed and shortly after you're born, the hymen recedes away, leaving behind the small ring of tissue with an opening. The most common presentation is the half moon, 
which allows menstrual blood and vaginal secretions to flow out of the vagina without issue, and allows the tampons and other objects or body parts to be inserted without a problem. The structure's function is unclear, just like the appendix and wisdom teeth. But there are some hypotheses to do with protecting the vagina from potentially harmful bacteria. Sometimes this hole doesn't form correctly or at all and causes varying in size and shape. An imperforate, a microperforate, a kerberform hymen, and a septate hymen are four other hymen types that hymen covers almost the entire vagina with one or several tiny openings. Menstrual blood and vaginal secretions might flow slowly and be limited in their way to exit. The person won't know that the opening is small until having trouble inserting a tampon or having penetrative vaginal sexual activity. In some cases, during penetrative vaginal sex, the hymen stretches and generally tears, leading to potential bleeding for one to two days for some people. Still, each person's experience is different according to the thickness and elasticity of the hymen. So many other things can cause a hymen to thin out and tear, like participating in physical activities like biking, horseback riding, gymnastics, and masturbating. Gynecologic exams, such as a pap smear, can also tear the hymen. Using tampons can also stretch out and tear the hymen. One of the most common misconceptions is that an intact hymen confirms a person's virginity. There is no way to tell if someone has had sex by looking at their hymen. Some people don't even have a hymen in the first place. Also, the hymen doesn't always break during penetrative vaginal sex. Think of the hymen stretching like a condom stretches to accommodate different sizes. For some people, it hurts when their hymen stretches or breaks, while others do not feel it happens.